So, yesterday we left it at this. We uh, pinned the tang. Everything is now together. And I also cut off the corners. It gave us an idea of what we had to work with. And I have to say it looks very, very good. Uh, you can also see the shift in color halfway. This is because when I started to put the uh, pine pitch, I put on the, the whole surface of the, uh, of the uh, birch bark, the whole surface. But then I realized I was running out of pine pitch, so then I just put around the tang and uh, the width of the tang that I believe would be the uh, final size of the handle. The width around the uh, uh, the birch bark where I, th I think will be the final size. So we still have some material to cut through to remove and then we will start to shape our handle. wonder why I have this block here. This is to uh, uh, elevate the blade from hitting. Okay. It's to elevate the blade from uh, hi hitting the metal of the uh, device. So that I don't risk to break the blade on the vice. What's up with the <clears throat> Right. I think we'll continue to cut some more. It's not gonna hurt. Still have lots of material to go through. Still lots of material down here, but we'll take it slowly, lots and lots. Closer and closer. We still have lots to remove. So I will continue to saw 
And then when we are nearing what looks to become a handle, we'll do take one of these. Uh, is it rasp in English? To shape it further. Okay, but one thing I will have to do, if you see there, there is a gap between the blade and the uh, antler. A little bit on that side also, not too much. So what I will do is, I will gather some of this pine, pine pitch, and uh, Heat it up a little and stick it in there. Fill the gap. So I better do that before I get to remove too much. Okay. I could actually take the uh, uh, redundant pitch of these from these parts here. It will also do. Right, let's do that. It's for my mosquito system. this needle again to heat it up and then some cleaning up to do but you see the gap is filled
Okay. Still have a bit here to remove, a lot to remove, but uh, if we can remove in big parts with the small saw, that would be save us a lot of work. Still some work to do. It's getting lighter. Alright, let's get on. You can hear the scraping of the uh, antler, but that's okay, we're gonna have to shape these uh, as well. I uh, initially, initially thought, wanted to have this guard uh, a bit shaped, a little, shaped down a little, not as pointy, naturally. But uh, then I came to thinking, and I think I will remove it entirely and make a somewhat round more multifunctional handle that you can use in all kinds hold in all kinds of ways and work with in uh, more positions than come on in more positions than just uh, using this piece as a guard I have to be careful putting pressure that way on the handle because I, I really don't want to break it here. All uh, tensions are here 
so I don't want to break the handle so I'm doing going about very carefully as well it sounds harsh but I'm also holding back I'm holding back as, as I uh, go forward with the uh, file Okay, I'll have some work to do. In many ways, it's the uh, rear of the knife and what do you call it? The front handle that kind of shapes the rest. Especially when you uh, pin it down like we did, there is this ring. So what I'm doing here is uh, trying to shape the antler around this ring and eventually we'll probably end up pretty close to the ring by a very small margin. So these protruding pieces I'll probably file down. Rough handle coming together. Okay, so we had some breaks for some hours. We went into town to uh, shop some and uh, also visit my brother and uh, his wife. Had some nice dinner that we left around 4 o'clock, 16 o'clock and now it's soon 21, 9 o'clock. And let's continue. Bit of a mismatch. Hey, Mr. Tambourine Man, play a song for me. I'm a 
Still too thick. The basic, the basic alignment is done. Just need to straighten up some lines. Okay, so we are coming near to the end of what our knife will look like as far as the shape and design. I still have to work it down a little, it's still a bit too fat. And also I will work around here, narrow it down a bit more smoothen up some lines and here up, up as well but uh, in general the rough design is there and I'm still not sure if I want to keep this I, I will straighten up the back 
and I'm still not sure if I want to keep this just a, maybe a little guard but uh, as far as shaping of the blade I will uh, end this part of the work on it now and uh, we will cut in when the when uh, it's all done and so uh, next part will be uh, the oiling sandpapering and oiling up okay see you in a bit all right guys i worked a little on the knife last night and we have our final design so what needs to be done now is i will just sandpaper it make it ready for oiling uh, the oiling is not really necessary because these are natural materials especially the birch has its own natural oils in it but the pine pitch spruce pitch in itself is also very what weather resistance resistant but why I want to put oil on it is it will be linseed oil boiled linseed oil and the reason is that it will bring out some nice coloration here so uh, let's uh, sandpaper this thing and uh, then I will take you up there on the porch and we will uh, uh, put some linseed oil on it and then we will go through the knife so I've been uh, filing on this using these uh, types of uh, files resps I don't know and down to uh, some pretty fine metal files and uh, so I don't need to start with a coarse paper I'll go directly on this uh, uh, 240 no I don't it's a fine grain paper anyways so let's go to it Start to rain. And it's a hard rain. And it's a hard rain. It's a hard rain. It's gonna fall. Where have you been, my blue eyed son? Where have you been, my darling young one? Whew, coffee. Ah, coffee, coffee. <clears throat> you don't really need to sandpaper the birch because it has a natural grittiness to it a non-slip surface so you're actually countering it when you sandpaper it it's good to have the grit the grip non-slip especially when you're working with uh, fish but I really like you can go ahead and oil it immediately without sandpapering it but the, there is this guard here that helps with the uh, non-slip as well so uh, yeah, I finally decided to leave the guard on there.
Hey, where have you been, my blue-eyed son? And where have you been, my darling young one? And it's a heart, and it's a heart, and it's a heart, and it's a heart. Oh. There are some scraping marks here, I don't know if you can see that going upwards, but uh, maybe I'll leave it on there. I'll have to use a coarser paper to remove that. Okay, I will get back to you when this is done. Alright guys, let's oh. oil up this knife. Final sanding is done. Look at that beauty. Mosquitoes. So, I have cleaned up around here, you can see where I have filled in the small gap, everything is tip top tight, I've also filled in this gap around the ring. This knife is good to go. It needs some uh, sharpening, but you're gonna have to sharpen anyways when you use it. This uh, coloration on the tip of the blade is from my brother who used the blade to mix up some stuff, I think epoxy. Anyways guys, the handle is ready. What a journey. It's very stimulating to work the way we just did. So I would like to talk a bit more about this knife in the rain. Uh, you can see the design. It's a slight drop from the rear to the blade. Very slight drop. It's slimmer down here and it then grows. It's pretty straight from the blade and onwards. The sideway is also you have this guard here. It also drops from the rear. It's more narrow here. 
then it grows, fattens up, and then as you approach the rear, you have this slight angle there. So you can see the belly. Comfort is very nice. It's a very comfortable knife to hold. It fits my hand perfectly. So, and this is the first, the other knife I made. <clears throat> it has some patina on it. I think I made this one in 2010, 11. It will gain some yellowing and patina from use. The birch becomes a bit more red brown. The antler becomes a bit more yellowish with all the uh, sweat and grease from uh, meat and fish. This blade is handmade, gifted to me by a friend. This blade is, I think, factory made. It's carbon, carbon. They are basically twins, design-wise. One difference is the guard drops down. You can see the difference in guard. This one goes up, that one goes down. This blade has a better fit. This is water. It's a drop of water there. This blade has a better fit. This one is not as fitting. The rear one is copper, the other is just I don't know what metal. They are both sunk in. So I initially wanted to have a smaller knife than this one. But you know what guys? I think I will gift this one to Paula. This will be, I will give it to my wife. Because when she was seeing me working on this, she was expressing that she didn't really have a knife of her own. So this will be her knife. There's nothing wrong with this one. I really like it. <clears throat> Differences. I left a bit more material around here than there, slightly. And it's to give a more sturdy grip around the blade so that it doesn't crack as easily. These are working tools, but they are not meant to be abused. So no hitting it, I, I don't hit my knife, I don't baton, I don't hit it, I use them for, uh, for work, but I never abuse them by hitting them. The material handle will hold up for life, it's quality. Okay guys, we have come to the end of the knife handle making. This one is now officially my wife's knife and I will keep this one. And I still have to make a sheath for it, a housing. That's another journey. But uh, thank you so much for uh, coming with me on this journey it has been very very nice I've been working on it on and off 
done some work taking it forward little by little and now we have finally come to the end I still have to make a sheet for it but that's that's another story okay guys thank you so much for watching and I hope to catch you on the next one